Welcome to Off Center's Online Learning, a chance to receive the same high quality course material with one on one instructor feedback in a colorful, convenient package that you can absorb at your own pace, anytime, anywhere. When scheduling or distance gets in the way, Off Center Online is the best answer. So, Arrangement View can also be used actually to create your entire track by itself if you wanted to. Uh, we're going to show you a quick old school drum production technique circa, you know, let's say mid 2000s, early 2000s. Before, before that point, this was um, essentially the way that you would make drums. You'd have your, your linear view, you'd have your arrangement view kind of uh, set up here from left to right. And what you do is just lay your drums down on the grid. And this gives you a lot of, you know, if you're good at this, it gives you a lot of opportunity to uh, customize and manipulate the audio in, in unique ways. But in, inevitably what ends up happening is it's a bit of a tedious process, especially if you are, uh, you know, making anything original, uh, you have uh, unique intricate patterns that you're creating drum-wise, then you'll notice real quick how, how this becomes a bit of a a more demanding process than some of the more modern techniques. All right. So anyways, let's take a quick look at what we can do in arrangement view with drum production. Uh, this is going to be a, a sort of short uh, demonstration of, of how I used to make my drums when I first started. All right. So now that we're in arrangement view here, uh, we've already laid down some, you know, four to the floor drum patterns just by, you know, repeating things over and over again. Let me uh, wipe the slate clean for a second. And we're again going to use this, again, you can highlight and, and just hit delete to, to get rid of anything inside of arrangement view, right? And now I'm just going to use uh, this kick snare, these two kick and snare tracks and maybe my hi-hats just to show you what you would do if you were uh, just using kind of uh, singular drum hits uh, to create a beat. Okay, let's let's just make a break beat, you know, staying consistent with what this cold cut beat is at the moment. And again, what I would do is I would take, you know, one of these drums here, you know, and this is, demands knowing a bit about your your grid as well, right? So uh, I've got my my kicks. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna command V and just lay kicks on every second beat. Okay, just to get myself some sort of loop happening. All right, so we've got our kick laid out here along the grid. It's always easier to, to produce when you have some sort of sound of the rhythm actually happening at the moment. So I've created a simple pattern here, which is my kicks. All right. And then we're going to start to get a bit more intricate. All right, so I'm going to double this up. And we're going to introduce our snare into the equation as well. Again, I can just copy and cut and paste this. I'm going to command C, lay this on the I'm going to create a bit more of a break there. And we're going to copy and paste and place our snare on the fourth beat. So let's just, all right, that's not bad. That's a little something we can go off of. This is what it would sound like if it was a one bar loop. Highlight this entire section. Right click and you can select loop selection. And let's add another kick drum at the ending there. And I can just kind of follow my cursor along. Bring some hi-hats into the equation here. And again, remember you'd be dealing with singular kind of one hits or one shots. Copy and pasting my hi-hat. But you can see that there's a lot of kind of moving around, a lot of zooming, um, a lot of manipulation in terms of where I'm placing things on the grid. I'm going to duplicate this. OK, 
okay? I might go to my track volume at this point. Bring it down a little bit, all right? Let's bring our bass into the equation here as well. So I'd be using like a bass hit from here. Solo that track for a second. Oops, wrong track. All right. Let's reduce that to a quarter note and then I could copy and paste. and bring my bass in here wherever I feel like it fits, okay? Double click stop to bring it back to the 1.1.1 just to reset yourself. Uh, let's unsolo our bass so we get, and I think I want my bass on the one at the moment. All right, so there you have a quick little one bar beat. Reduced it down from that initial eight bar size, but if I wanted to repeat that a little bit, I would you know, duplicate or highlight the entire area, duplicate it all the way out for eight bars, right? And this would make up my intro drum perhaps for the track, right? All right, and this is where I can start making edits on the timeline. All right, I got my track volume there. I can now control my automation lines. <clears throat> Using shift to get rid of that, ex those extra automation points. All right, so that's your old school drum chopping production 101. Uh, you know, really cool ways that you can, again, manipulate the audio inside uh, arrangement view. But as you're gonna see when we get into the, the drum programming section of, of the class, um, there are sort of newer, more modern techniques and instruments inside Ableton that we can use to you know, achieve the same results, but a lot faster. So it's all about optimizing your workflow, getting those ideas that are in your head onto the canvas as quickly as possible. So um, you know, these are again, like I said, valuable techniques to know because inevitably we're gonna end up in arrangement view and you're gonna be doing all kinds of micro editing and slicing and dicing and playing and chopping and, and arrangement of your track here. Um, so, you know, the, the better equipped you are, the more well-versed you are with these techniques, the, the more possibilities that you'll have for interesting kind of creative results, all right?